Welcome back to my channel, Will Lord Prehistoric Survival. I'm down here at my earth lodge and today I'm going to make a dagger from a very nice piece of flint. Get a leg pad on. So this is our rock and it sat in somebody's garden for 30 years. They had a go at it a couple of times then decided that they didn't want to hit it anymore because they felt they were messing it up so they brought it to me and um, I'm going to see what I can do with it So we could make a dagger from this piece, but also by taking that flake off, I've set myself an opportunity up to take this whole side out from right here. I've really got to try doing that, don't you think? So this is a big quartzite hammer and it's got the weight that I need to put such a shockwave through that stone. Beauty. Absolute beauty. So in terms of having something to play with, I don't think we could have asked for that to have gone any better. Stunning bit of material, huh? Right, let's get a dagger made. Right, we'll start off by getting this cortex off the back. And because this is such a good preform, we can go straight into the soft hammer. Nice flakes. Platforms have got to be just right. I was hoping for more from that. That was the one I was after, that nice long one. Platforms have got to be just right, if they're not, then they're going to cost me. 
and um, I can't afford to let that happen. So when you're sorting this out, basically I call it balancing and um, it's gaining control. And then we go, we're winding the pheasant up. That felt good. We're just dealing with this square edge at the moment. Call that stitching. Basically, you go from alternate sides. And that's called a braiding. which basically means that you're strengthening up the platform. As you can see, this new edge that we're getting right here, that's um, going to be much easier for casting the flakes over the surface. Good, that didn't go too bad. I'm going to retrieve that because that's a nice bit of flint. That went nice, look at that. So hopefully you can see the shape of this nicely. It's leading on to that. Good. I have a tricky bit right here. It's so close to the end it's going to cost, it could cost me a bit of length, which I technically don't want to lose. So we'll go from the side start off with and we'll see how lucky I get good that went across the top of that quite nicely just going to deal with that last little bit of cortex there So I have plans for this dagger, if I manage to um, win it from this particular piece of stone. 
it's going to go into a handle and as of yet i haven't fully decided what the handle is going to be made from although i do have an interesting piece of um woolly rhino bone that's been sitting on my shelf for a while waiting for a job and this could possibly be the job for it and then the dagger is going to be one of three prizes in my next raffle which should be coming up any day soon so far we have one longbow and hopefully we'll have a dagger and I haven't decided what prize three will be yet So I really need this platform here in top quality position to sort this little area here out. So I'm going to pressure flake that. It's now that I could um, actually ruin this piece, break it in half. And I don't want to do that. That was useful. We're starting to get close to it now. Even though we still have a problem on board. There's some problems at the end that can Um, catch you out. I want that. Although I also have something here to take as well. We'll sort of journey around this area for a little while. And we'll build up a situation. I don't want to take the material out the middle first because that would um, probably cause it to break in half. So just to recap slightly, this has so far come from there, maybe more like that. So we've kept our length and we've done everything we needed to do. We just need to tidy out the ending on this.
Right, I'm going to stop hitting that now. I think it's time to see what we can do as far as finding a handle goes. Let's go and have a look. So we'll go and have a quick look and see what we can um, see what we can find. What I had in mind was this bone here. Um, but that's not going to work, that's just too big. We've got plenty of antler down there that we could pick from. Um, but I think, really, we've got to get in here and have a look. There's a load of different stuff in here. Um, that's a piece of um, mammoth ivory. That would be nice. But on this occasion, I don't think so. This is a piece of um, leg bone out of the River Thames. That could be an option. Um, a bit of deer leg bone. But I think what I'm feeling is this. Let's go and see how that matches. Okay, so what I did is I sawed that off, just used a regular saw, beveled this edge a little bit, and um, we have the flint blade, and that actually fits in there a treat. That's going to be the outcome we're looking for. And um, what I have here is some hot pitch, just getting that up to a temperature. And I've got to fill this up with it, um, which can be a bit of a tricky old job. I always find myself wanting some ingenious method, of which I haven't come up with yet, of managing this stuff. And... Um, well in there without any glue to be quite honest I need to get enough in there to fill the whole thing make sure it's not running out the bottom but also I don't want to make too much of a mess of the bone itself and I don't want to overfill it yet, and yet again sacrificed another wooden spoon <coughs> Okay, that's in there. I've got a couple of runs. The best thing to do with the runs is not to mess about with them until they've dried. And then you can flick them off. Right then, what do we have going on here? So, I've got a skin that was a rawhide. And uh, very, very thin. Got quite a few holes in it because it was uh, just such a thin skin. And then I have some Russian birch bark here, two sides, with a view of that slipping in there like that. So, what I'm visualising is placing that on there, bringing that round, because remember this is going to shrink and it's going to tighten and it's going to hold everything together. And then I'm going to cut directly down here, down the centre of that so that bit will be missing then we can fold that bit over and we can do the same there I'm going to cut it with a bit of obsidian there's not anything that can be any sharper than this nice, that edge there OK, 
good. And so what I'm planning is that when it dries out, it's going to go transparent and uh, then you'll be able to see the, the um, silver birch bark once again right through the um, right through the rawhide. Well, uh, you kind of get where I'm coming from. We've made a nice little sandwich of the bark container, holding that all together. What I need to do now is stitch that up right through the front here. Just spreading the holes out with an awl and then not even using a needle because I've decided to lace it with the same material as it's made from. Should all behave the same then. But uh, what I do know is uh, it's every stitch takes a moment or two. Refinding all your holes, spreading it out. Well, I guess that's about it then. So we have the sheath, which is made out of rawhide and Russian birch bark, all stitched with rawhide as well. And the dagger with uh, the Thames foreshore bone, English flint, that all slips in there quite nicely. And it's one of them occasions where I learnt something because I haven't used this technique before, I've used similar things but that was much easier than I thought it was going to be and it's proper solid. So, last thing to say really is um, if you watched that all the way through I hope you enjoyed it and uh, learnt a little bit and um, just remember you've been watching Will Lord Prehistoric Survival and um, be grateful if you follow and subscribe to me. So. All the best. Cheers for now from the Earth Lodge.